Hello everybody. So the Honkai Star Rail 1.4 special program happened yesterday and I didn't really have a chance to watch the full event. But at least I can now watch the trailer without knowing what's gonna come and react to it kinda semi-live. Now I'll mostly be talking about the law here so just as a disclaimer I might mention certain things that may be considered spoilers so just a heads up. I'm also gonna open the closed captions because I'm gonna be talking over the video so just you know ignore those. Anyways, let's jump into it and let's see what's in store for us in Star Rail 1.4. This looks kind of a bit like some arena battle game mode. Is it an event or something? Oh, two pass. My Join me dance. Okay, it does seem like it's like a trainer battle thing. Everybody has their own monsters they are bringing to the battle and so on. I'm curious how this is gonna work. I doubt it's gonna have a story element, but yeah. Okay, so it seems Topaz's story is gonna happen in Bellabog. Okay, that's pretty interesting. We know that she works for the IPC and that she's a debt collector. So does Bellabog have some debt that we don't know about? Oh, I really, really want to summon Topaz more because she's like a follow-up character. At least that's how I understand it. I'm really curious to see how she actually works. And it's kind of tough deciding between her and Jing Liu. Okay, so it seems that the Trailblazer and March is involved with all this. And I'm kind of curious how that works. Will we go back to Bellabog to deal with this whole situation? Is it an event? I've always been curious about that. Like, how do we travel back to previous, you know, previous places like Bellabog or Hertha Space Station whenever there's an event? Or are we right now still in the Lofu as far as the lore is concerned? Okay, it seems like, hold on. Yeah, it seems like I, the IPC, who is represented by Topaz, is attacking Bellabog for what I assume is money owed to them. It's really surprising because lore-wise, we know that Bellabog follow the architects who follow Clipoth, and the IPC also follow Clipoth. But it's kind of interesting to see that they, even within internal factions like that, they might have situations where they're fighting each other. So I'm kind of curious what happens with this. I returned to the Law Fu so I could surrender myself to the Alliance and atone for my sins. Okay, here's the interesting thing about this. So in one of my previous video, I mentioned that I think we're not going to go to Panacony so soon. And we're going to have something that pulls us back into the Shenzhou Luo Fu. But it seems like we're being pulled back to Bellabog instead of Luo Fu. And in Luo Fu, there's going to be a story that's going to progress that revolves more around Jing Liu. Um, I don't know if the Trailblazer is going to be involved with this because in the earlier video, we saw them be involved with the whole Bellabog thing. So does it mean that the story can progress even if the main character isn't there? That might be a good thing, actually. But... Let's continue watching and see whether there's anything else. The last you see of me. Oh, there's gonna be a there's gonna be an all-out fight between the quintet. Genius design looks so good though. Like I love the ice crescent design and all and all that. Oh, hold on. Okay, this is most likely the fifth member of the High Cloud Quintet, the Foxian lady or whatever. We have learned absolutely nothing about her. Uh, I don't know where she is. And right now, we have four out of the five members with Jing Liu, Jing Yuan. Just now, we saw Dan Heng. I 
Don't know if he's really still here. And then I think the last one's gonna be Blade. But we have learned absolutely nothing about this character, or maybe I'm misremembering, but I'm curious whether she is the catalyst for the High Cloud Quintet breaking up. Maybe she died, or maybe Jing Liu did something to cause her death or to cause her to leave. But I'm really curious what her role is within this quintet, because we've met like 90% of them up to this point. Cloud Quintet. Okay, so Blade's here. Oh, okay. That's another really interesting thing. Like, if we back up a little bit, right? Okay. The the red eyes with Jing Liu and Blade. So, right now, we know that Blade is affected by Mara Struck, But there's this suspicion that Jing Liu is also Mara Struck. So, I'm kind of curious to see how she's been handling with it. Because Blade has mostly been using Kafka's Spirit Whisper to deal with it. But I'm curious how Jing Liu has kept control of her Mara state or whatever you want to call it. What really makes me even more curious is that if both these characters have Mara Struck, I wonder whether the Foxian one also is afflicted by it, but I know that the Foxian uh, species doesn't have long lives. So, yeah, I don't know. But it makes me really curious to see what, how the story is going to unfold. Oh, that's basically it. Okay. Who's this? New character? Fire Nihility. That's interesting. So we're getting like two fire characters. A fire, what's her name? Topaz is, and then we're gonna get a Nahilti character. What is it? Oh, this is the arena thing just now. Yeah, it is. Oh, it looks like a. Oh, okay. It's a like a Pokemon battle thing with 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 monsters. It's pretty interesting. I wonder how deep this is gonna. How deep this system is gonna be? Is it? Like every monster is gonna have its own stats and skills and all these kind of things. And I'm kind of curious whether this is gonna be like a whole new game mode or it's just gonna be an event. That looks pretty interesting. Okay, more simulated universe. I, I really like the way they have handled simulated universe because it seems like they they didn't just add it as a as a you know a game mode and then it's an afterthought. I like the fact that they basically keep adding more stuff to it. They have been really consistent with updating simulated universe stuff. It's really good. But this is just an event, so it might not be permanent. But you, who knows? Maybe they're testing something out, right? Yeah, I think that's, that's all of it. It's a pretty short trailer, but... So far, there's been a lot of interesting things. We saw uh, there's going to be a story continuation with Xianzo Lofu, with Jing Liu and the uh, High Cloud Quintet. We probably might learn a little bit more about them, why they broke up, and what Jing Liu is currently doing back on the Lofu. I mean, she says she's, you know, turning herself in, but that's probably unlikely given what she mentioned in 1.3, where she's out to hunt Yausha. The other thing also is that we're going back to Bellabog to deal with Topaz and IPC and helping Bronya out probably. So it seems like we are not going to Panacony anytime soon, at least in 1.4. There doesn't seem to be any indication of that. Maybe in the special program they talked about it. I didn't see it, but in the trailer, there doesn't seem to be anything like that. So yeah, it seems that we are going to stay here for a while and maybe in 1.5, we end up going to Panacony for sure. Overall, it's it's pretty interesting. I think, um, you know, I, I do want the story to continue, but at the same time, more law is always good. The other thing that I really enjoyed was the fact that some of these stories are happening even without the Trailblazer being there. And I really like that because... In some games, you have this situation where the world doesn't progress and you only see it through the eyes of the main character and everything else remains kind of static. But in this case, it seems like even if the trailblazer isn't there, the story is going to continue and it's, it is going to progress and the world is going to be continuously built. And at some point in the future, the stories will converge and then you know we'll get an updated story about what happens to those other characters that we didn't see. So... Yeah, I, I'm really curious what's going to happen in 1.4, story-wise at least. And it seems that we're still going to be in the Shenzhou, which is not a bad thing. Um, but overall, looks very interesting. Anyways, that's basically the whole trailer. Um, I don't want to drag this out anymore. Uh, if you enjoyed watching the video, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Let me know what you think of the 1.4 trailer in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. As usual, have a nice day ahead.